What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Gunfish TV. Today we are going to be talking about a super hot topic within the fishing industry and that is forward-facing sonar. Now unless you've been hiding under a rock for the last literally probably over a year, you would know that forward-facing sonar has been one of the biggest topics in professional bass fishing out there. Whether, honestly, even on the local level of bass tournaments or just the local fishing scene, forward-facing sonar has been a hot topic. Now, anytime you could get on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever, anytime you would see somebody catch a big fish with forward-facing sonar, your people would automatically jump into comments and say, well, you would have never caught it without it. Then you have this big dispute between anglers, you know, whether you're for it or against it, you have this big dispute about why you should have it or why you shouldn't have it. Well, two organizations have stepped up and they've actually made some big changes when it comes to forward-facing sonar for the year of 2025. Now, one being the MPFL, which is the National Professional Fishing League, they have completely banned forward-facing sonar for the 2025 season, and that includes practice. You cannot have it at all. So whether you're pre-practicing for the tournament or if you're in competition, you cannot use forward-facing sonar. You cannot have it on your boat. So this is a really, really big deal because this is the first organization to not allow forward-facing sonar since it has been introduced. Now, a lot of people are excited about this. I actually watched Cal Welcher's video last night where he was bringing it up, you know, talking about it because he fishes in the MPFL as well. And he was saying that he really, really liked the change and that it would help the MPFL set themselves apart from BASS and FLW. And something else, he brought up a really, really good point. And this is about lures. Now, when it comes to lures, you know, throughout the years, we have had just a vast array of lures that we've been able to use, bass fishing or that pros use. You saw them catch fish on it. You wanted to go buy them, whether that was a crankbait or a spinnerbait or topwater that you saw these guys catch fish on. You know, they went a classic on a particular crankbait. Well, obviously, a lot of people are going to go and buy that crankbait. Well, this year, in all of the organizations, pretty much, and even non-professional bass fishing as well, local derbies or whatever, you have seen two baits dominate pretty much everywhere. I'm going to be honest with you. Some fish were caught on the jig using forward-facing sonar. I've caught some big fish using forward-facing sonar with the jig. But predominantly, the deep diving jerk bait, and then also the jig head style minnow. Now, these two lures are the two lures that absolutely dominate with forward-facing technology because you're able to see them well, and also you're able to just really finesse those fish into biting on the smaller minnow style uh, lure. And then also the jerk bait, you can really change a retrieve, you know, fast, slow, get them fired up and really entice them to catch them on that jerk bait. And honestly, if you watch the majority of these events, the majority of fish were caught on a jerk bait and also on a jig head minnow. So, Overall, I think that kind of hurts the fishing industry a little bit, you know, just because, you know, I kind of think it short term helped it because there was a development of these, uh, you know, soft plastic minnow style baits, developments in different types of jerk baits like the Berkeley Cred, you know, just different stuff like that. And there was, uh, you know, lures being particularly made for forward facing sonar technology, well, that really takes away from your other lures, your regular soft plastics, your worms, your flipping baits, your creatures, things like that. So, you know, it kind of helped one aspect, but it kind of hurt another. So overall, I don't think forward-facing sonar, just from the beginning, I've never thought that forward-facing sonar was a really good thing when it comes to bass fishing. But we're going to get into my thoughts on it after I make this next little breakthrough right here. Actually, today... BASS just announced that they are going to limit forward-facing sonar to only one transducer, and it has to be on your trolling motor, which was the traditional way that forward-facing sonar was used. You have your you know, transducer on your trolling motor, forward-facing, and basically BASS is saying you can only have one 
forward-facing sonar transducer on your boat and it has to be on your trolling motor. They've also limited the amount of screens. So you can only have a max of 55 total inches of screen on your boat. So one forward-facing sonar transducer, 55 inches of total screen. So unlike the MPFL, which is completely just outlawed, it completely banned it all together, BASS is still allowing it, but only with one transducer on your trolling motor. So big changes, super, super big changes when it comes to these two organizations. Now, MPFL, of course, is a much smaller organization, and BASS is a much larger, I would say, is the premier organization. But they've been paying attention to all these comments that people have been making on social media, uh, you know, just viewership changes, things like that. Trust me, these, you know, decisions were not taken lightly and they definitely had some really, really hard times, I'm sure, arguing back and forth about what needed to be done. So they have made the changes that they feel like is best for their organization and is best for the sport. So what do I think about forward-facing sonar? Now, I have forward-facing sonar here on my Ranger. I've caught some really big fish using forward-facing sonar, and I've caught a lot of fish using forward-facing sonar. But as I said earlier in the video, I've never been a fan of forward-facing sonar ever since it was introduced, way back when, seven, eight years ago when I first heard about it. I said, man, this is really going to take away from what I feel like is the authenticity of the sport and it's going to keep anglers from being able to really learn uh fish and just through you know hard work and going out and grinding and figure the fish out on your own you know and then there's people that argue and say well you know since forward facing sonar has come out i've learned more about fish behavior than i learned ever before well i'm not going to disagree with that but you know, I'm 40 years old. I've been bass fishing since I was six. I fished my first tournament when I was 10. And, you know, when you got beat or if you won, you won off of your pure knowledge that you had learned, that you had figured out, you made the perfect decisions. You didn't really base anything off of live feedback through a transducer to your screen. You know, I've I've seen the changes. I've been bass fishing long enough where I've seen the changes in, in mapping and I've seen the changes in 2D sonar, you know, down scan was introduced, side scan. All these are absolutely great tools. I mean, fabulous tools for finding bass and being able to catch fish, but we cannot even argue, in my opinion, that any of these things are effect as effective as forward-facing sonar. Anytime you're able to look See how, well, see where a fish is first off. See basically what size he is. You're able to see how this fish reacts to your lure. You're able to make on the spot color changes, you know, lure changes, retrieve changes based off how the fish acts. These are things you've never ever been able to do before. Like, never, ne never have you been able, you don't know what the fish are doing because it's their underwater world and you've never been able to see it in you know a live format well now with forward facing sonar obviously you have been able to see that and over the past couple of years it has really changed the landscape of bass fishing you know but pretty much everybody now uh tournament wise or or you know lure wise like i said is dominated with jerk baits and and the small minnow style baits which i mean they're super fun to fish don't get me wrong and then also glide baits as well i wanted to bring that up but it's changed the way bass fishing looks. It's not the traditional style of bass fishing that it was when I grew up and when you went and fished a tournament. It wasn't, you know, it's not really now may the best man win. And people are saying, well, everybody's a level playing field. Everybody has forward facing sonar, you know, and I agree with that. But the thing is now it's not one totally on knowledge. Like it isn't totally one and every tournament isn't totally won on knowledge. You're able to break the water down a lot faster. You know, you're able to find brush piles that people have had for years and years and years. And I've taken advantage of those things as well. I, I'm not a hater on live scope. 
you know, like I said, I use it. I've caught big bass, but I've caught hundreds and hundreds of fish with it. But do I love it for the sport? And do I love catching fish with it? Like, no, like you could literally take it away and it wouldn't bother me a bit. I caught fish for over 30 years without it. Had an absolute blast, caught giants, you know, without it, caught some really good fish, won a lot of tournaments without it. So it doesn't bother me that this technology is being reduced in these tournament formats. And I wish it would come to the local scene. It's not because they're going to worry about, uh, you know, participation or whatever. So no local tournament is really going to, you know, outlaw it or say you can't use it. I wish they would. But, you know, it doesn't bother me that this stuff is being taken away from these professionals. If you're supposed to be the best in the world, prove it. Prove you're the best in the world. You know, that, that means you're the best in the world without the best technology. You're the best angler. You can make the best decisions on the spot. You can make the right lure changes, the right color changes. That's what being the best in the world is about. Of course, you want to take advantage of what tools you have, but I think forward face and sonar put it a little bit above and beyond what, you know, I feel like a professional should have. You know, and I'm not... Like I said, I'm not totally against it, but I think it's a really good move really for the MPFL to ban it completely because that sets them apart from other, you know, organizations. But also I think it's a good move for BASS to limit it. You know, nobody really wants to sit here and watch somebody stare down at a screen for, you know, hours at a time. I've actually went out, struggled fishing regularly cut on my four face and so on all my live scope and went to cracking them. And I ended up not even editing the video or using it to show you all because when I went to edit it, I wasn't saying anything. I was looking at the screen. Yeah, I was catching fish, but that's, I want to be explaining what I'm doing, talking to y'all, letting you know what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, why I made these lore changes, you know, what the reasoning behind all this was. And I found myself not doing that. So I wouldn't even edit the video. You know, because it's just like silence and, oh, I catch a big fish, you know, whatever. So, forward face and sonar, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of it. I've never been a huge fan of it. Uh, I try to keep my thoughts about it to a minimum. But do I think it's really, really good for bass fishing? And, you know, like the professional landscape of it and professional tournaments all? No, I do not. And secondly... What it's done is a lot of locals or older guys that don't have this technology and they're not going to get it, they've quit showing up for the tournaments because all the local tournaments are being dominated by forward facing sonar. And to be honest with you, it's cut, even though I have it, it's cut me out of fishing a lot of tournaments as well because I don't want to feel like I have to rely on forward facing sonar to win a tournament or to catch fish. I don't want to do that. I want to go out, I want to have fun, I want to catch fish, I want to make good videos for you guys and girls. And that's what I want to do. I don't want you to sit here and watch me staring at a screen the whole time. So, like I said, MPFL total ban for 2025. BASS just announced one transducer on your trolling motor, forward facing transducer on your trolling motor, 55 inches of total screens. And I think they also limited or made it where you cannot have the little trolling motors on your power poles. They have a specific name for them, but I can't remember what it is. But I think you can't have those as well this year. I think they've banned those. I'm not 100% sure, so I don't want 100% say that, but I believe they have uh, done that as well. But like I said, I think forward face and sonar, it's an amazing tool, but I think that just overall, I don't feel like it's great for the industry. I don't feel like it's great for bass fishing and I don't think it's great for these young guys coming up fishing where they have all this technology available to them and they don't have to go out and really learn the sport of bass fishing because let's face it forward facing sonar makes it a heck of a lot easier than it used to be to break down bodies of water to find brush piles to figure out lures and all this Things that it took us years and years and years to figure out and that we were able to keep secret. Well, now they're out there for everybody. And like I said, I'm not complaining. It's awesome. But I think it's a really good move on these organizations to limit 
and basically ban, you know, forward-facing sonar technology. So I think it's a good move on their part. Let me know your thoughts. If you disagree with something I said, be sure to comment. Let me know down below because we're not all going to agree on this stuff. I understand that. But like I said, I've caught tons of fish with it. I've caught way, way more without it. I love cracking them on a frog or a jig or flipping up in a treetop and cracking them on a rage bug. There's nothing like it. So it's not my deal anyway. But anyway, like I said, let me know your thoughts. I really appreciate you watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Go check out some of my other videos where I'm actually fishing and catching some big girls. I appreciate it, and I'll see you next time on Gunfish TV.